Hello everybody, welcome back to this channel. <laughs> um, for those who are just tuning in for the first time potentially, uh, this is the Cisco study group that I've been running for probably on and off since I think November. Um, we we ran these on Twitch for a long time, it was CCNA focused, actually it was CCENT focused originally. We took a look at some CCNA topics at the end and then we really pushed past CCENT and CCNA and we're, we did vault into and we're going to continue vaulting into the CCNP track that Cisco has, so specifically around the Encore exam. Uh, we were on Twitch for a long time. That platform had its limitations. All CBT in general, we wanted to move over to YouTube as our platform of choice, and so I'm very excited to be building a platform on YouTube and to hopefully get some uh, other videos made. I think that's the, the biggest advantage to YouTube is that even though it doesn't really matter where you do a live session, in the end where if I if developing a library of videos with YouTube, we can put it all in one place. Whereas, you know, with Twitch, it would be, you know, some, some content is over here and the live sessions are over there and, and understand why some are over there and why some are over here. And so uh, this just kind of brings it all together on one platform. So I'm excited to be here. I hope you're excited to be here. We're going to be diving into Encore and really probably staying in Encore for the indefinite future. So, we're probably going to see some people come in here, studying up on Encore, maybe pass the Encore exam and go on to do bigger and better things. And, but I know that there's always people out there who are working towards their CCNP Enterprise. And by the way, CCNP Enterprise is a new name. So Cisco, um, you know, just, let's just lay some groundwork here, right? Cisco just completely upended everything with their certifications. So their certifications used to be we had the CSENT, and then we had the CCNA, and by the way, if you wanted the security, you'd go get the CCNA security, or CCNA data center, or CCNA wireless, and all these different types of CCNAs. And then you could also do the same thing at CCNP level. You could go get the CCNP route switch, or you could get the CCNP data center, or the CCNP security, CCNP unified communications, or wireless. And and that was good. I mean, that, that definitely worked for us for the better part of probably 10 or 15 years, but I love what Cisco has done to kind of upend the apple cart and say, you know what, we need a more modern way of handling certifications. And so the gist of what they did was they said, okay, we're going to get rid of the CSENT, you know, that, that's no longer the foundation. They wanted to come back to the CCNA being the foundation, having one exam that's, you know, I mean, yeah, CC, the CSENT was one exam. Well, yeah, a, a number of exams regardless. Just like having one CSET, one one uh, certification that would give access to kind of all the other technologies. They wanted that in the CCNA. They wanted the CCNA to be really um, where network engineers go in order to really start the certification process. Because whether you're doing data center or security or unified communications or wireless, we all have to have good, solid route switch foundational knowledge. And so for those who were going straight after a CCNA wireless, for example, um, you could be really, really good at the wireless part of technology in general, or maybe your job, but then you, you go through that process, you get certified, and now you're in a real life scenario and you're really good with the wireless, but you don't necessarily know how packets flow through a switched infrastructure. And as you can imagine, that's pretty limiting from a skill set perspective. If I have a network engineer who can troubleshoot my wireless signal but can't tell me how packets flow through the network, uh, that's uh, there's less I can do with that network in, uh, admin on my team. And that goes for all of these technologies. So if you're into unified communications, for example, one-way audio problem, that's route switch. If you can't troubleshoot packet flow through a network, then you're not going to be able to offer as much value even as a UC specialized engineer. So what Cisco did instead was say, okay, we're all gonna start with CCNA, one CCNA, and we're going to build specializations on top of that. And so I can take that CCNA and I can get a specialist in, uh, or specialization in security, or I can get a specialization in data center. And then I can do the same thing with CCNP. So where the, um, with the CCNA, you can get like maybe a specialization to go with your CCNA. With the CCNP, it's a little even more uh, deep. 
we, we look at it and say, okay, well, if I'm going to get the CCNP in enterprise networking, which is what we're talking about here tonight, um, so CCNP networking, well, it's here. Okay, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, <laughs> so the specializations I can get, there's a lot of different specializations. All right, so I'm a guy who has several CCNPs, right? I have CCNP route switch, I have a CCNP in data center, uh, once upon a time, I had CCN, the CCIP, which is basically CCNP in service provider. And if I told you, hey, I'm a CCNP data center, before all of these changes, as far as anybody is concerned in the industry, a CCNP data center is an expert at Cisco application-centric infrastructure and Cisco UCS and Cisco data center design and Cisco data center networking. And, and the odds are I'm not necessarily an expert at all four of those things. I might be really, really good at the networking components, but I haven't studied the servers inside the data center quite as much. And what these specializations allow us to do is say, yeah, I can go pass the core exam and that's good, but now I can actually get a specialization to say, look, I'm a specialist in data center networking. And so I'm a network engineer first and foremost. And some of those other technologies I'm good with, but I'm not necessarily at that professional level with all of them. And if I wanna go get that professional level, then I can get additional specializations. So let's go ahead and um, I, wanna, I wanna show Cisco's website here and talk about it. Uh, real quick though, as far as what we're going to be doing tonight, we're gonna to be talking about the Encore itself, okay, what, what exactly it is. And I've already kind of given a little bit of an overview of what Cisco did with their certifications. I got a little excited and I jumped in before even showing the agenda here. Um, you know, mentioning the specializations, et cetera. And then uh, we're, we're gonna spend the rest of the night just looking at the Encore Blueprint. So the Encore Blueprint is uh, where we're going to spend a lot of our time if we're indeed studying for the Encore. And so um, over the next many weeks, what we're going to be doing is going through the Blueprint domains one by one. And this, the goal, the purpose of the study group is really to come alongside you with where you are in your journey and give some additional resources, maybe develop a community that's, you know, we're able to encourage each other. We've seen a lot of people get their CSENs and their CCNAs going through this study group. Um, it was a lot of fun and that's, that's what this is all about, right? It's just to encourage each other and to stir one another up into being excited about going and getting these certifications and to believe that you can do it. And then from a technical perspective, hey, you know, tonight we're gonna to talk about whatever it is. Let's say it's spanning tree one night. Um, it's a good opportunity for you to take a break wherever you are in your studies and to come in here and make sure that you understand spanning tree or whatever topic it is that we're going to be covering that particular day. So um, with that, I wanna go ahead and, well, let's see here, what are we doing first? We're talking about Encore. So let's just kind of lay out what Encore is now. So Encore, Cisco took their CCNP routing and switching and they renamed it. They rebranded it to be called the CCNP Enterprise. And I've got this uh, Cisco's website pulled up here. It's the CCNP Enterprise Certification Training webpage, the homepage, the lander, so to speak. And, and the reason they did this is because what they wanted to do is they wanted to bring all of the, not only the routing and the switching, but also the software defined networking. So we've heard of things like Cisco SD-WAN and Cisco's software defined access, for example. But also the wireless world is now part of CCNP Enterprise. And so we don't see CCNP wireless anymore. We don't see CCNA wireless anymore. We don't see any of the CCNAs for the most part. Uh, it's just one CCNA again. But either way, wireless has just been brought back under the umbrella because wireless is, yes, it's its own thing. I mean, I no disrespect to wireless engineers because I myself was one for the first five years of my career. I was very laser focused on wireless technologies. But at the same time, wireless is truly just routing and switching with different medium. Um, where a lot of the wireless skills come into play are understanding the wireless signal propagation, you know, understanding all of those parameters, but then also just learning how to manipulate Cisco's wireless environments via their wireless controllers or Cisco Prime infrastructure or whatever, you know, hey, even SDA now. 
But I think SDA is a big part of that. So Cisco's Software Defined Access SDA is a platform that's meant to bring wireless underneath that route switch umbrella. And so now we've got one platform that's not only managing my entire route switch infrastructure, but I also have that same platform that's managing all my wireless for me. And so as Cisco has continued to bring all of their wireless technologies, call it under or alongside or with their route switch technologies, it makes sense to treat that all as one on the certification side as well. So this is another way that they shook up the certification world um, 100%. They, they really changed a lot, and that's just one of the ways that they did that. Um, as far as the Encore exam itself is concerned, a couple of things about it. So first of all, they it is a $400 exam right now. That's U.S. dollars, so um, I, I'm speaking to U.S. Uh, territories at the moment right now because I don't exactly know how that pricing translates around the world but I can tell you relatively uh, you know the CCIE written used to be four hundred dollars all right and so the reason w and, and the the NP I want to say the NP was in the 250 to 300 range originally so the reason why it's now basically the price of the CCIE written exam of old is because it is the new CCIE written exam so they, they, they effectively made this exam into the CCI written because, or uh, uh, they made it effectively into the CCI written because they got rid of the CCI written. That's what I'm trying to say. So the CCIE, for those who don't know, is a two-step exam. You would always go take the written exam and then you would go and fly out and you have to take the lab exam. And the lab exam is really the meat of that exam. I mean, I don't know the, the ratio, the number of people that pass the written is exponentially higher than those who go past the lab exam. And so when it comes down to it, um, when, back before all these changes, you could look at that and say, you know, getting the route switch written, like, let's say CCIE, doesn't matter which technology, I guess, getting the CCIE written was a little bit of a waste if you never got the CCIE. And even then it kind of felt like an unneeded step, right? I mean, if I can pass the lab exam, I can probably pass the written. And so what Cisco did was recognize that that's kind of in a, this gap where it's not needed anymore. I mean, yeah, yeah, it serves a purpose and it's needed um, on some level, but we want to make it more relevant to the person passing it. And so what they did was they, they still, they got rid of the exam um, because you, just to kind of add fuel to the fire there, Passing an exam, passing the written exam got you zero certifications. Um, as somebody who has looked at resumes, people will would put on their resume, hey, I passed the CCIE written exam. But, and that's, I guess that's okay. You can put that on your resume to show that maybe you were thinking about taking the CCIE or you wanted a challenge or you're motivated, whatever you're trying to convey with that, that's fine. But it's not an actual Cisco certification. It doesn't matter that you passed the written. It just kind of, it's more of the soft skill. Like it shows that you're driven or what have you. And that's good. Again, that's good for trying to get a job. But it doesn't actually translate to a certification unless you go past the lab. So that's where, again, we're just, let's, let's just get rid of the exam. But let's keep the requirement. You still got to pass something. Now, instead of passing the CCI written to go take the lab, you got to pass the core exam for your specific technology track. Uh, for those who didn't know, you didn't have to have any Cisco certifications to go past the IE. I mean, if you want to get your CCNP, you had to pass the NA in order to get the NP. And that's just kind of the stepladder system, right? It's like you get this cert and then you can go get that cert. CCIE was not that way. Um, I actually, in my last job, uh, there was, I mean, I'm, I'm a guy, I will tell you, I have two CCIEs and for both of them, I went CCNA, CCNP, CCIE. Okay, that was for my route switch. That was for the first one. And then the data center came out. And the data center came out as an IE before the NA or the NP. So the the IE came out and I was thinking about going and taking it. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and go take the written. And I was in the middle of going after the written when the NA and the NP came out. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to hit the pause button on the lab exam and you know or the written exam, I suppose, at that point. And I'm just going to go get the NA and the NP. And that's what I did. Again, I started at the NA level. I got my CCNA data center. 
And then I went and I got my CCNP data center. And then I went and took that IE written. I was way more prepared for that IE written because I was studying so much for the NA and the NP and it elevated my knowledge and my understanding in the data center space to the point that I could go past that written and eventually past the lab. That said, okay, so that's me. That said, my last uh, place of employment, I was just starting to say, uh, we had an engineer, very brilliant on the UC side, never really passed any certifications. I think he had passed a couple like 10 years prior or something, he let them expire. Um, great, great engineer, just didn't have any certifications. And he finally decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go get that IE. And he did. And he went out, he studied for the IE, got the written, went out to the lab, passed the lab. Literally the only Cisco certification he had was the CCIE. And as far as I know to this day, that's still the only certification he has. I don't know, I haven't kept track of him since uh, leaving. But either way, the, um, the point is this, you didn't have to have any certification in order to go take the CCIE. And technically that's still true today, but now at least in going after the IE and passing the core exam, you're halfway to a CCNP. And so you're going to see a lot more people pause, I think, at the CCNP level. Anybody who was thinking about just going straight after the IE, you're not taking a meaningless exam anymore. You're not going after CCIE or yeah, the CCIE written, which does you no good. Instead, you're going to go take the NP, uh, let's say the core exam, again, like Encore, Enterprise Networking Core. So I'm going to go take that core exam. And at that point, I could go take the IE lab, but maybe I'm not feeling ready. So instead, I'll go get a specialization and the specialization plus the core, that's what makes a CCNP. At that point, I've got my CCNP and then maybe I'll feel a little more confident going after that CCIE lab exam. All right, so that was a little bit of a dovetail, but the reason I brought it up is because, again, it's a $400 exam and that is extremely limiting. I'm not a huge fan of that price tag. I really am not um, because I've, I've always been fortunate for the vast majority of my career, my employer has been willing to pay and different employers along the way, different employers have been willing to cover exams for their employees, not just me, but for all of our staff. And, and that's huge because that, that's a huge benefit. 400, 400 US dollars is not a small amount of money. Um, especially if you find yourself in a place where you're trying to get a better job so you can maybe increase your salary and free up your finances, $400 is, is tough. And so I'm not a fan of that, but at the same time, um, it, it's just our reality. So, um, you know, if $400 is too tight of a spend for you, then, then look into, honestly, if you're sitting there with your CCNA, maybe make sure that you're properly paid or you might need to consider a new job in order to elevate your salary so you can afford the training and afford the materials and afford just taking the exam because $400, maybe a lot of us could buckle down and find a way to get $400. What if we fail a couple of times? I mean, now all of a sudden you're talking about three attempts, that's 1200 bucks. That's, it adds up fast. And, and I, and I get that. So, um, not usually a downer on these kinds of things. I just, um, I, I just, uh, I wish that Cisco had kept the price tag down, um, suppressed it as much as possible. So, um, but they didn't, and that just is the reality. And so $400 USD, again, wherever in the world you are, um, it's, it's going to be probably, I assume, uh, whatever the translation of 400 US dollars is. Okay. So now for the process, how do I get my CCNP? Uh, the way we get our CCMP, I already mentioned it briefly. Um, I'm going to scroll down here and take a look at this. The way we get our CCMP, let me just scroll or I zoom in. There we go. Is we pass the core exam in any technology track. So we're looking at enterprise networking specifically. This could be true with, or this would be true with data center, security, uh, wireless is gone, I guess. So <laughs> unified communications, any of these other tracks are going to be very similar in how this operates. We pass the core exam and we pass a concentration exam. Not necessarily in that order. We don't have to pass the core exam first. In fact, if I look at those concentration exams, 
I might say, you know, I've got my CCNA down here. I, I passed my CCNA. That's that's good. You've got that. You could go maybe take one of these special or concentrations. Let's say implementing Cisco SD WAN solutions, and now you'll have a CCNA with a specialization in enterprise networking. And so this is where you you could go take the concentration exam first. That said, I think most people are going through the process as if the core exam is the first, it's the foundation, it's laying, you know, this is everything I need to know, kind of more broad than deep, and then using these concentration exams to go deeper and to get the CCNP. So again, you have your CCNA, you wanna get your CCNP, the process to do that, go past the Encore for enterprise networking, um, you know, security would be the security core exam. They call it S core or score, if you want to say it like that. So they're all, they're all on DC. I'm, I'm working right now on the DC core uh, track for CBT nuggets. So I, I put out a lot of training material for CBT nuggets. I was actually got to participate in the uh, encore training, a lot of fun. And, uh, and that's great. So now I'm onto the DC core. So that's the data center core exam. So same thing. We're going to see these core exams, C-O-R, uh, is what a lot of them end with. Um, the, these exams that are part of different technology tracks. So if another technology tracks track uh, interests you, then be sure to check those out. So either way, you have your CCNA, you want your CCNP, you have to go past the core exam. The core exam does not give you a CCNP. You have to pass a concentration and it even says choose one. So let's say you go out and you pass that same exam, the SD-WAN exam, ENSDWI. So if you were to do that, you would have a CCNP. You would have a CCNP in enterprise networking specifically. And you would have a CCNP enterprise networking with a specialization in implementing SD-WAN solutions. So you put that on your resume. You'd say, hey, I am a CCNP enterprise networking individual with a specialization in SD-WAN. That's sure to catch attention with some of these enterprises that are putting SD-WAN solutions into place. It doesn't even necessarily have to be Cisco, right? It just, because if you understand Cisco's SD-WAN deployment, you're probably going to be able to figure out other vendors as well. And so it puts you at a, an immense advantage over somebody who maybe has a, I don't know, a CCNP in a different specialization if the company is deploying SD-WANs. Um, so, so that's one thing. Now, the other thing is maybe, maybe you're, you know, you, you got that CCNP and SD-WAN and you're looking at a new job and, and this new job, they're saying, you know, we really want somebody with some design experience. And you're like, you know what, what I'll, what I'll do is maybe they, maybe they hire you, but they still want you to prove yourself. Or maybe you know about, I don't know, I'm making up too many details about this fiction, <laughs> fictional scenario, but uh, what I'm trying to say is, let's say you do want that designing uh, experience and you especially want it on your resume. Well, you have the NP, the NPEN, <laughs> you have the Enterprise Networking CCNP with a specialization SD-WAN, you can go take this exam, the ENSLD, and by doing that, now you have two specializations. You have a specialization SD-WAN and you have a specialization in Enterprise Network Design. Because of the way Cisco has built this, you can get the specializations that you desire and add it on top of your foundational CCNP certification. So compare that to how it used to be. Remember, I said I have a CCNP in data center. Uh, in fact, for the mo let's just erase that for a moment. Let's go back. Let's, I have a CCNP in routing and switching. So if I just told you back in the day, hey, I've got a CCNP in routing and switching, and you know these are the topics that are covered on the CCNP, you're going to assume that I'm pretty darn good at all of these. You're going to assume I'm good at advanced routing and switching. I'm pretty good at SD-WAN. I'm pretty good at design. I, I'm pretty good maybe even at wireless. You'd see two of these specializations are wireless. This is where wireless went, by the way. Wireless didn't go away. We didn't get rid of the CCNP wireless and just say, forget wireless. You know, you can get a wireless specialization on top of your NP enterprise. So that's if you, you know, for all you wireless aficionados out there, you can absolutely still get wireless certified and this is how you do it. And then the last one is automation. So if you, I can tell you right now, 
I am not at the same level. I am not at a professional level of knowledge on advanced routing and switching and SD-WAN and design and wireless and automation. Okay, I have strengths and I have weaknesses in those categories. And so if I today now were to go get my NP route switch, my certifications are going to reflect my strengths and my weaknesses. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, because I'm a huge fan of this. I really am. I, I'm, I think Cisco knocked it out of the park with this design with saying, hey, th we're going to let you specialize in certain ways. I think that simplifying the portfolio of exams is great. I was never a huge fan of the CSENT. I didn't really feel like it particularly fit very well. Um, it used to be too easy, then they made it too hard, and it just, I don't know, it just felt like too much. So now we're simplified. There is no CSENT. We have CCNA. Then you have the specializations, and then you go get that core exam and additional specializations beyond that. And it's just a relatively simple process. It really is. Not an easy process. I didn't say easy, by the way. <laughs> Don't think I said easy. Uh, it's still a still difficult uh, process and a challenging one, but it's one that will make you a better engineer. And that's the whole point, right? I mean, we all want to put a certification on our resume, but going after certifications, I can point to very specific times in my career where I went after a certification. And yes, I got to put that certification on my resume afterwards, and that was cool, but it made me a better engineer. Okay, the CCIEs, hands down, made me a better engineer because of how much time I spent configuring devices. But even down here at the NP level, yeah, I wasn't in the lab as much, but studying routing and switching at this level made me such a better troubleshooter. It made me such a better designer. I, I mean, I, I remember in the midst of my CCNP route, route switch journey, um, Actually, I had just completed my route switch journey and I was talking with a CCIE and we were able to have good conversations. I mean, he knew more than me. Don't get me wrong. Um, I learned a lot from him, but I was able to have good, meaningful design level conversations with him because of all of the studying I had put into the CCNP that, that really came through in a meaningful way at that point. So um, absolutely, we're, it's challenging, but it's worth it. We're all going to get so much better at this technology because we're going through the certification process. And yes, that might mean we fail an exam, and that's okay. It might mean that we fail a couple of times. It might mean we just get really down at, at other times. But that's why the study group is here. You get down, you come in, and you let us know. And we'll encourage you, and we'll um, just do what we can to fill your knowledge gaps and hopefully point you in the right direction. Watch this video, check this training out. Um, just here's some basic answers to some basic questions or what have you. And let's come together as a community and see each other succeed. Cause that's, that's what this is all about. Um, is just coming together and encouraging each other and getting us all over the hump of these exams. And, and I'll also say this, as a trainer, it's easy for me to lose track of this. This is a phase. I mean, you're, you're, most people watching this, you are going to pass the NP. You are going to pass the Encore. And then you're going to move on to the next challenge, or, or maybe that's good enough. And, and you just need to maintain that over the course of time. But either way, it's, it's a phase. We sacrifice for a little while in order to help create a better reality for us on the other side. And that mean if that means a better job, or maybe it's just a, you know, higher salary at the job I have, or maybe it's better respect, you know, because when you sign your email and say that you're a CCNP in your email, you, you, you get more respect that way. I mean, it's, it creates a better reality for us, but it does take sacrifice. And all I can tell you is I don't regret a single sacrifice that I made along the way. It was always worth it to go after some of these certifications. So hopefully you'll feel the same way once it's all said and done. Okay. Whew. All right. So we're about halfway done. Time to move on to the blueprint. So, okay. 
If you have any questions, I should have said this said this at the start. If you have any questions, be sure to chime into the chat. We're doing this YouTube premiere style, and so um, we'll we'll come together and answer any questions that anybody has. But hopefully, this all makes sense. Um, I will tell you this, by the way. Um, again, I am a CBT Nuggets instructor, and I love training for CBT Nuggets. Phenomenal company, phenomenal team of trainers. I'm honored and humbled to be part of this fantastic team of trainers. Um, we at CBT, what we have today, we have Encore. I got to participate in that again, as I mentioned. In fact, if you fire up the Encore training, you'll be greeted for better or worse with my smiling face because <laughs> I, I've trained on the uh, basically the first two blueprints with, with a couple exceptions. So uh, first two blueprint items are, are me. And then you also see, again, talk about some of these fantastic trainers, Keith Barker, Jeremy Chara, Knox Hutchinson, Jacob Moran, and Chuck Keith. So there's six of us in total uh, that come together and, uh, and and attack this Encore exam. Next, we have NRC. So NRC is this Advanced Routing and Switching, right, Advanced Routing and Services, I'm sorry. Um, I was saying it wrong earlier, but that's fine. Advanced Routing and Services, this is basically just diving deep into routing. And uh, this at CBT, we also have this course. So if you pass the Encore and that's what you wanna specialize in, Perfect. Uh, Keith Barker and Knox Hutchinson do that. I did not participate in that one. And then we have Ian Auto. Ian Auto, I believe, is taught entirely by Knox Hutchinson. I believe um, uh, Ben Finkel also actually is part of that as well. Um, it's automating Cisco Enterprise Networking Solutions. There's an auto version, by the way, I believe, for all of the content or all of the um, all of the technology tracks. So, like in Data Center, for example, there is a DC Auto. Because Cisco is really pushing this concept of automation to all of the different technology tracks. So um, those are the three that we have at CBT as of the time of this video. I promise you there's some, wait, did I say I just, two, right? Sorry, I said three. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, SD-WAN solutions, we, we definitely want to tackle that one. Um, enterprise network design, that's a personal passion of mine. I promise you that... Um, you know, <laughs> I, I will one day put out content for, for that, however long it takes. And then we've got a couple of trainers also very interested in the wireless portion. So it wouldn't surprise me if by the end of um, some season, we've got access, you know, training access to all of these different concentration exams. But I think we've probably, NRC is going to be what most individuals who pass the core exam want to go after. And so we got that covered. And Ian Auto is just, I mean, frankly, we should all be taking that course. Even if you don't go take the exam, we all need to have those automation skills. And so between that and all the other automation nuggets that Knox Hutchinson and Ben Finkel and some of the others have put together, um, we, we all need to make sure we're taking those, uh, those courses. All right, cool. So uh, moving on, let's take a look at that blueprint. So the blueprint. Down here, I think it looks like I already expanded it. Let me collapse that. So here is what Cisco wants us to know as part of the Encore. So again, this is not the specializations. This is truly now the Encore exam, the one exam that we're trying to go past. All right. And right away, our eyes are probably going to fall to the, where the 30% is. That 30%, I guess I can't highlight that. Cisco's blocking me from doing that. That's cool. Infrastructure is a major part of this. I mean, if we glance at it, we'll look at more detail later. We're talking about layer two technologies, layer three technologies, EIGRP, OSPF, BGP is in here. Here's the wireless section, as well as those IP services. A third of the exam is going to be us being really good technically with some of these routing protocols and switching protocols and services protocols and such. But look at what some of these other things Cisco wants us to know. I mean, they want us to know network architecture. That's design level stuff. They want us to know virtu virtualization. Like, what, what are we talking about there in virtualization? We'll look at it in more detail. We're talking about virtual machines and virtual switching. Isn't that data center stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, it's data center stuff. It's, I like data center stuff. <laughs> it's, <laughs> we as network engineers need to know data center stuff because of this right here, virtual switching. Switches are no longer just physical devices. They're inside our virtual environments. And so, yeah, we need to understand that. And it, by the way, this is the data center stuff here. All of this 
that's just virtual networking concepts, VRFs, for example, and IPsec tunnels. And then these two down here, I know some people are looking at that and you're either freaking out or really licking your lips and getting getting excited because uh, Lisp and VXLAN are two network virtualization technologies that we've got to be aware of. So I, mean, I know I'm getting excited, I'm jumping in. Um, Network assurance, that's a new phrase from Cisco. It basically means assuring that the network is behaving as it should. And really, in the context, out, <laughs> how do I say that? Outside the context of CCNP data, uh, enterprise networking, out of the, outside the context of Encore, network assurance is, for the most part, an automated process. You're going to be talking about network assurance engines that can tell you run analytics on the on the network and tell you what's going wrong on the network. And that's all cool stuff. Here they just use that phrase to say, hey, you, you need to be able to configure troubleshooting tools like SPAN and ER SPAN and IPSLA and such. Okay, we'll get back to that. Um, security, 20% in security. Our networks need to be secure, not as an afterthought, but as the first thought. Security absolutely has to be the foundation for our exam. So you know, hey, we're, we're talking about an enterprise networking exam that already has branched out into data center and security. And check out this. Remember what I said earlier? Cisco really wants us to understand automation. So that's the last portion of the exam blueprint. So let's dive into this in a little more detail. Take a look at what Cisco wants us to know from an architecture perspective. All right. So, um, and this, by the way, these are the two sections that I got to teach as part of the Encore section. So that's why I mentioned if you fire it up, you're going to see me because I was section 1.0 is architecture. And so um, there you're going to see me uh, talking about arch network architecture. And I mentioned already network design is a big passion of mine. So it was a lot of fun putting together that content. Um, and virtualization as well, being that it's data center, I quickly volunteered to, to do that. <laughs> um, which, you know, Jacob Moran being a, epic VMware instructor uh, for him to graciously allow me to do the hypervisor section. I was really excited about that. So I appreciate that, Jacob. <laughs> I really, I, I wanted to teach all of this stuff too. That was um, the networking stuff. All right. So architecture, what does Cisco want us to know? So we've got to understand as engineers a little bit more about the architecture of our network. So the, the curious thing Something I've always found funny is that the CCIE is an exam where you go and you put your fingers on the keyboard and you're punching in CLI commands left and right. And you just, you're so amazing, right? You're supposed to be so amazing at configuring devices. And then you take those CCIEs and say, wow, you are so, so good at configuring those devices. So what do we ask the CCIEs to do? In a lot of cases, we have them sit in a chair and design stuff. Like, well, wait a second. I didn't, I didn't learn how to design things. I mean, I, when I got my CCI route switch, um, I went to a job for a Cisco partner and was in a 50-50 role where, yes, I was going and doing deployments. And, yes, I was taking tickets and troubleshooting issues for customers and such. I mean, I was, I was doing the hands-on. But I tell you what, when it came to designs, I was pretty much the one who handled the designs at that point. So any design came through, okay, customer needs new switches. How would you design this network? I mean, I went, very early on when I first got there, I was like, boy, I, um, I, I think I know what I'm doing, but I didn't study design. I studied implementing, right? Um, the I in CCIE, it doesn't stand for implementing. But um, I think of it that way because you compare that to the CCIE with the CCDE, the, the D is for design, the I could might as well stand for implement. I mean, those are the two certifications that you're supposed to have, but there aren't nearly enough CCDEs in the world. In fact, the CCDE, as, as good as it is for design, I mean, the vast majority of designs are still done by CCIEs these days. And so what we need to do is actually get some design knowledge, I guess. I mean, we need to study that. 
And so Cisco is telling us, hey, you know what we need to do is we need to design, I'm sorry, we need to study how to design these design principles in an enterprise network. And we need to be able to design um, two tier, three tier architectures. We need to understand what the, um, uh, what was the word I was looking for? The hierarchical network model. We need to understand that. And not just like, oh yeah, I can draw it. It's an, it's an access layer and a distribution layer and a core layer, but actually know when we use those things. And when we talk about layer two to the edge and we're talking about layer three to the edge and how, where does the data center really fit into this and how does the internet come in and all of these design concepts, we as CCNP enterprise networking engineers are going to be expected that we can speak to design. All right, so not only design with the, like I would say that this design section 1.1, this is probably for the wired network, but then look at 1.2, analyze design principles of a wireless LAN deployment. So we're talking about centralized and distributed and controllerless and controller-based and cloud design models for wireless LAN and then location services. If you're a wireless engineer, that section is probably not going to be that much of a challenge because you know what all these things are. But if you're not a wireless engineer, you need to spend some time in there because you need to understand how wireless networks are designed. And again, whether you are a wireless engineer forced to learn wired designs or whether you're a wired engineer forced to learn wireless designs, either way, we're becoming better engineers, way better, well-rounded individuals who can help our enterprise organizations make decisions. So that's what, um, that's what the first two sections are about. Third is interesting because it's a little data centery, but at the same time, we are dealing regularly these days with enterprises of all sizes, huge enterprises. If you work for one of those small environments, maybe a small business or a school system or government entity or manufacturing facility, whatever you are, whatever type of company you work for, we're seeing cloud be embraced by everyone in the spectrum. And so if you don't understand how we connect our network out to the cloud environment, we're gonna be very limited as network engineers. So that's what 1.3 is, is understanding the networking of both on-premise data centers with cloud infrastructure. Um, so again, more well-rounded individuals, more well-rounded network engineers. That's what we wanna be. All right, um, so here's, here's where things get fun, okay? Unfortunately, this, is the only, I say unfortunately, but I'm gonna say it like that. Unfortunately, this is the only place on the exam where SD-WAN and SD-Access come in. Now, some of you are saying, Jeff, why is that unfortunate? Because I don't know those solutions. Nobody does. Very few people really understand those solutions. And this means that we don't need to study it anymore than, <laughs> than, than this. And that's true, but I'm telling you right now, that is the future of Cisco networking. The SD-WAN and the especially the SD-Access, that is how we are all going to be configuring our Cisco networks one day, okay? That day is not yet here, but hey, if you dive in to SD-Access today, you are gonna be well prepared for whatever comes next, okay? So I do say it's unfortunate because I wish that we had to delve way deeper into these technologies. Um, one of the challenges with that is that we just don't get access to all of the SD-WAN and SD-Access uh, labs. Like, you know, it's hard to lab this stuff up, right? It's hard to get access to some of these GUI interfaces, hard to get access to Catalyst 9000s. And, and I get that. Um, and that's a challenge. But that doesn't change the fact that we need to know these technologies inside and out. And so I would... Um, I would consider just going as deep into those technologies as you can. Now, again, I did the training for those for CBT Nuggets. If you're a CBT Nuggets subscriber and you're going through that session, those sections, you're going to be a little surprised, I think, because you're going to pull, I think both of them have three separate skills. The skill is about seven or eight videos. So we're talking about maybe 25 videos a piece just for one little blueprint item. And the reason for that is I want you to be prepared, not just for the end, the encore. I mean, yeah, we need to zero in and not try to learn everything under the sun. But at the same time, 
it's going to be absolutely critical that we know these technologies for our jobs. And so um, preparing you for that is, is just what I wanted to do as an instructor. And so, um, yeah, if you watch those videos, I, I, I'm never going to make a guarantee, right? But you're probably going to ace the sections on the Encore itself because you're going to know plenty about these two technologies, SD-WAN and SD-Access in order to go pass. But, um, again, I just, I can't recommend enough that we continue to dry it, drill into those technologies as much as we can. Um, and hopefully, hopefully soon from CBT, we'll have more content that drills into SD-WAN and SD-Access as well. Okay. Looking at that, it's still a little bit small. Let me zoom up even more. I know it's getting now, now we're talking. Look at that. Okay. Maybe I'll pull out just, there we go. A little bit. All right, so um, next, 1.6. So this is the one section in these first two domains that I did not teach, Jeremy Chara. Um, you know, I defer to him all day long. You know, if he he was really excited about QoS and um, and wanted to teach it, and I said, absolutely, yes, please. <laughs> um, because we all know how effective he is at communicating and, and teaching something like QoS. So what's interesting there in there again is wireless. We need a wireless QoS. So be ready for that. And then here, 1.7. Okay, the word differentiate is, is appropriate because this is where we start to differentiate, I would say, between a CCNA and a CCNP. What's really the difference? Aren't you just studying more of the same stuff with a CCNP? Yeah, but you're going, your brain is going to start to figure things out in a different way. You know, when, when a CCNP is troubleshooting a network problem compared to a CCNA, the CCNP is able to very quickly go through the process faster than a CCNA. And part of the reason is because you should know and understand the intricacies of switching mechanisms. One of my favorite questions that I used to ask when I would interview network engineers for the Cisco partner I worked for, I would always, as part of every technical issue or technical interview, I would ask one question that would tell me where you really are as an engineer. And, and this question, I would ask CCNAs who were, would be clueless. I'd ask CCNAs who absolutely knew the answer to this. And incidentally, I'd get the same results for CCNPs. I had a CCNP that couldn't answer this question. And I'm like, you're not, okay, thank you. You know, you, you passed the CCNP, good for you, but I'm not interested in hiring you into a CCNP level role. Yeah, and at this point, well, maybe you're at the edge of your seat because you're waiting for me to tell you what that question is so you can memorize it, right? <laughs> yeah. huh, maybe I shouldn't tell you that. That's going to ruin technical interviews. The question was simply this. You're going to be disappointed. Explain ARP. Explain ARP. I, I actually would regularly get laughed at by people nearby. I'd get off the phone from an interview and they're like, so they know what ARP is? <laughs> Because they all knew this was my favorite question to ask. But think about it. ARP is the glue that holds layer two and layer three together. If you can't explain ARP, then that tells me you don't understand layer two and layer three. If you can't explain how a MAC address gets mapped, an unknown MAC address, by the way, gets mapped to a known IP address, then, and, and you don't, uh, you're not going to be able to explain to me how I get from an IP address on one side of the network to an IP address on the other side of the network. And again, all I can tell you is that question differentiated my candidates, not only in my mind, but truly their capabilities. I mean, it reflected their capabilities. Every other question I asked, they, I mean, if they knew what ARP was, they could figure out most of the other things. It just seemed like that was the case. And if they didn't, couldn't answer the ARP question, um, when I moved on to other sections about layer two and layer three stuff, they, they were clueless. They couldn't answer the question. Uh, I never had somebody not be able to answer that question and still impress me on a, on a technical interview. So why do I bring that up? <laughs> because again, that to me, back to this word, differentiates us as network engineers. Like it or not, we're in a competitive world and you're going to be up against other network engineers who have studied some of this stuff. And the way you can differentiate yourself is by studying things like hardware, whoops, hardware and software switching mechanisms. So we're talking about 
Ceph switching and process switching and ribs and fibs and all kinds of things in here. The TCAM. Can you explain the TCAM? It's a rhetorical question. You're not, not asking people to raise their hands in this virtual setting. But at the same time, that is a concept that I think puzzles most network engineers. We, just, we hear about the TCAM. We hear about the TCAM space. We think it has something to do with MAC addresses maybe or, or access lists or QoS or what have you. But what exactly is the TCAM? Why do we call it a TCAM? So all of these things are going to be um, concepts that we need to understand and know as CCNP enterprise networking uh, individuals. <laughs> Oops. All right. So that's architecture. We're running out of time here. Well, let's go ahead and blaze through this. So virtualization. I already mentioned it. We need to be comfortable with virtualization technology inside a data center. The network does not stop at the network switch. Okay, Cisco has phenomenal Nexus switches. Nexus is my favorite switching platform. But if all I know in a data center is Nexus switching, or all I know as a network engineer is the concept of a physical switch, then my relevance in the year 2020, which is the year it is right now, and beyond, is my, my relevance is low. I, I need to be able to explain what a virtual machine is and what the virtual switching world looks like. I don't have to be a VMware expert. Or I don't have to be a Hyper-V expert or any of these things. Uh, that's not what this exam covers, but it does cover some basic concepts. And so I need to understand what those basic concepts are. All right, so um, data path virtualization technology. So VRFs, this, Look, 2.2, this is like classic uh, virtual networking. And 2.3 is the modern day virtual networking. All right. So concepts like virtual routing and forwarding, that's basically VLANs at layer three. Um, it's nothing we study in CCNA level. We study VLANs at CCNA level. We're going to assume you know what a v VLAN is. A VLAN is to a switch, what a VRF is to a router. And so uh, we assume you know what a VLAN is. So we're going to relate that to to layer three world, explain VRFs, problem solved. Um, we need to be comfortable with the concept of tunneling. And part of the reason we need to be comfortable with the concept of tunneling and classic tunneling mechanisms like, again, GRE and IPsec, we need to be comfortable with those because all of our SDX stuff, SDX, I said SDX because it's software-defined WAN and software-defined access and software-defined networking and software-defined servers and storage and everything. We're, if we're going to be comfortable with that, we need to be very comfortable with tunneling. Because when we look down here, LISP is both a control plane and a data plane tunneling mechanism. And VXLAN is a data plane tunneling mechanism. And so we're going to take these concepts. Again, we take VLANs and we build on VLANs to learn what VRFs are. And then we take GRE and IPsec tunneling and we build on that to understand what LISP and VXLAN are. The funny thing is, is if you, if you go through the... Um, if you go through the, what was I going to say? The CC, CBT training for Encore, the, the, the exam content that, that I created up here uh, for CBT. Going through 1.4 and 1.5 to learn SD-WAN and SD-Access, uh, especially SD-Access, SD-Access is all about LISP and VXLAN tunnels, okay? Um, not LISP tunnels, but LISP as a control plane mechanism and VXLAN as the tunneling mechanism. All right, that's how SD-Access is built. And so by going through this section, you're going to be pretty comfortable with what LISP and VXLAN are. But by the time you get down here, whoops. So by the time you get down here, you're already going to know what they do, but then we're going to drill into more detail about how they do what they do. So that's the concept of virtualization. Let me collapse these. Okay. Infrastructure, as mentioned, this is where on the one hand, 30% seems like a lot. On the other hand, like, in a traditional and the old the CCNP infrastructure was probably 50 to 60 percent of this exam. I mean, it was it. This is basically again the meat of the exam, and yet the meat is only 30 percent. Uh, so this is this is the classic things. You know, we're we're looking at dynamic stack and dynamic trunking protocols and ether channels and hey spanning tree by the way, rapid spanning tree, or multi instance spanning tree. We need to be comfortable with that, and and these this is where you're really going to start drilling into labs. You need to be able to configure this, uh, these technologies. Layer three, same thing, EIGRP, OSPF, BGP, 
Okay, we don't need we don't need to be BGP experts for the CCNP Enterprise Network, but we need to be uh, comfortable with forming BGP neighborships and how routes are exchanged. All right, that's about the extent of what we need. Um, and then there's the infamous, of course, the best path selection algorithm. So that's a lot of fun. That's that whole weight and local preference and this and that and all kinds of things for those who have already studied it. If you haven't studied it, get ready to start memorizing some things. All right. Um, wireless, again, keep showing up in this exam because wireless is part of enterprise networking. It's part of the meat of this exam. So we need to be good at wireless. Some of us are maybe not from a wireless world and you might be grumbling like, oh man, I've got to learn oh, RSSI and signal to noise ratio and interference. Like these are things that I try to stay away from as a network engineer. Well, not anymore because we're there. Basically, are no more wireless engineers. You're an enterprise networking engineer. If you were wireless, now you're an enterprise networking engineer and you need to know the wired stuff. And you were a wired networking engineer, route switch. Well, now you're an enterprise network engineer and you need to know wireless. So describing the access points, the antenna types, that's all part of it. Uh, of course, we get into wireless LAN controllers and such. And so, um, yeah, this is Jacob Moran unpacks this. He does a phenomenal job. Of, of doing that. I got to watch a lot of his content that he was putting together as he was creating it and just phenomenal training that'll really um, just, just cement these concepts. So it's not, don't be intimidated by the wireless. Just just dive in and, and embrace it. All right, um, IP services, NTP, all the typical stuff. You need to understand some of these things. HSRP and VRRP, by the way, I cover that earlier as part of the high availability early on in the CBT training. Um, Here's where you need to learn how to configure it. Like I explain how it works. This is like time to time to configure it in the CLI. All right, so we're more than halfway done with the exam now. Network assurance again, kind of a fancy way of just saying SNMP, syslog, etc. Using these tools, pings, trace routes. Better be able to do an extended ping as part of a you know troubleshooting session or what have you. IPSLA. Some of these you won't have studied in CCNA land. IPSLA is one of those. Um, ER span, uh, that's a data center only concept. So it's like span and R span, except frankly, it's better. It's easier. So, um, not, nothing to be intimidated by there. Interestingly, we do have some DNA center stuff in here. And so this is where DNA center would be the controller for software defined access. So, uh, we, I, I did mention earlier, I guess that this stuff doesn't appear elsewhere. It doesn't appear elsewhere in great detail, but it does show up. It'll show up again in automation. Um, security, this is hardening your routers and your devices, AAA. We need to be very comfortable with AAA. If you're still using Telnet passwords or anything like that, um, you should absolutely be familiarizing yourself with the AAA commands at this point. Access list, control plane policing, probably goes without saying. Um, interestingly, REST API security shows up in here. It's kind of jumping the gun because we haven't learned about REST APIs yet. That's gonna happen in the automation section. But we'll probably, you'll probably have to come back and, and study how exactly you lock down those RESTful APIs um, on our network devices that are becoming very, very uh, merged with the world of automation. Um, here's wireless security. Okay, so know how wireless security is handled. And then, of course, th these are... These are more of the, uh, this is going to be very foundational type of conversation, right? Do you know what the Cisco next generation firewalls look like and, and all these things? So um, last but not least is automation. Again, depending on where you are, this is either going to be really intimidating or really exciting. I, I, I push you as somebody who does get intimidated by automation stuff um, that it's worth, it's worth being excited about. It's worth pushing past your comfort zone. This is this is beyond my comfort zone. I'm a traditional network CLI guy. I, I just am. And to embrace automation is hard. So I 100% relate. But I can tell you, the more I study automation, the more I actually put my hands on it, oh my goodness, it is so cool and so fun. And it's a game changer. And we talked again, differentiating yourself. Differentiating yourself. Um, I've heard Knox Hutchinson, our, one of our... Um, primary trainers who, who focuses on network automation, he has said before, and I've heard him say several times at this point, is like if, if you have, if, if, if you're a hiring director 
and you've got a CCNA on one side and you've got somebody who passed the DevNet automation exam, the equivalent on, on the Cisco automation side, which one would you hire? He's like, probably, really, truly, probably, as an automation guy, probably the CCNA. Because the CCNA is going to give me what I really need today. Okay, but then you have a CCNA and you have a CCNA with that automation. Or maybe you have a CCNP and then you have a CCNP with the automation specialization. He's like, every, every time I'm going to interview that person first because they know what they need, they know what they need to know, but they're preparing themselves for the future. So automation, hands down, something we need to learn. We mentioned REST APIs. You gotta get comfortable with modeling languages. Yang, for example. Um, EEM, by the way, that's been around for a long time on Cisco routers. It is a tool that Cisco expects us to know as part of the CCNP exams. So you need to get comfortable with that. And then um, orchestration tools, Pup, Chef, it, <laughs> Pup, Chef, it, Chef, Puppet, and then Ansible. And Ansible's Ansible is one that gets a lot of attention in the Cisco networking world. But generally speaking, we need to know all four of those. Whew. Okay. So went a little bit over, not too bad, but at the same time, wanted to make sure we covered the entire blueprint. So what's our takeaway here? Our takeaway is that number one, first and foremost, Cisco did a good job of restructuring their exams. I'm I'm thrilled with how they did it. I think it's phenomenal. The Encore as the CCI written, the Encore as the foundational exam for specialization. Look, I, at a minimum, I used to have to take three exams. And so on the one hand, I remember I was commenting earlier about I wish the Encore was a more affordable exam. I, some CCNP courses, I, Data Center was four exams. R Route Switch was only three, but that's still what three or four. Now it's two. I pass the Encore and I pass a concentration exam. And so in that sense, it could be cheaper um, if, if we are able to pass everything the first time. So um, number one, be very excited about how all of this came together. Number two, we are gonna be focusing in on all of these topics in this study group. We are focused on passing the Encore. And so unfortunately, that's not going to get you to the CCNP because you're still gonna have to pass the concentration exam. That's what places like, hey, CBT Nuggets, right? I mean, we pride ourselves on providing highest quality training that we can put together. And we hire experts in order to make that happen who are skilled at conveying complicated concepts. All right, again, I'm telling you, watch, go watch Jeremy's QoS stuff. Go watch Knox explaining automation. Um, you'll, you'll grasp that very, very quickly. Um, this, this study group is not going to prepare you for, like, if, if all you do is watch this and maybe do a little bit of reading on the side or something, you're not going to, you're not going to be prepared. Um, this, this is not a primary means of study. This study group is meant to propel you and give you the energy and to push you past the roadblocks that you face on your journey while you're reading the Cisco press book, while you're going through a CBT nuggets course, right? Bring your questions, bring your concerns, and we'll do our absolute best to answer all of those and to push you again across those hurdles and across that, ultimately, that finish line. So with that, thank you very much for joining me. Um, we are going to be back next week, drilling in right away into the architecture section. We are going to be talking about the hierarchical network model. And so bring your design caps and put those on because it'll be a lot of fun. We'll be sketching out all kinds of design elements that we need to know for the Encore. With that, thank you again for joining me. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.